Welcome, everybody, and welcome back for those who have joined us yesterday. This is the three-day accelerated jumpstart program for administering, planning, and deploying Office 365. Today is day two. And today and tomorrow, we will focus on planning and deploying Office 365. Module one will be around infrastructure planning. And I'm your moderator for all those sessions. My name is Stefan Schmidt. I am a enterprise solution strategist here at Microsoft. Been with purpose with the company last seven years in this role. And I'm focused on business productivity as a whole office, Office 365, all the products, Exchange, SharePoint, and Link. And in my role, I have executive engagements, talk about technology roadmaps, and taking feedback to our product teams, mostly delivering internal trainings. And with me, I have our main instructor for the next four sessions, Fulvio Salatrino. Salanitro. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> I butchered your first name yesterday, today is your last name. Fulvio Salanitro. <laughs> I Perfect. can do this. He's a partner, a technical consultant, uh, flew in from Italy specifically to deliver those trainings. He's our, one of our top person uh, for Office 365 and delivering these things. He has gone through all those certifications and passed them. Uh, so he knows what you're going through and what you will face. He uh, is very familiar with solution architectures, can walk you through all the details um, uh, very credibly and can answer all the questions we were facing. And he's a frequent presenter on this. So it, he is very well versed in Office 365. BPOS WPC has actually been presented uh, and done, done a technical demo at the official press launch of Office 365. So it's great to have you here, full of you. Thank, Thank you, so Stefan. So let's set the expectations for um, this Jumpstart program. Yesterday we were talking about administering Office 365, basically after everything had been deployed, how to manage Office 365. Now we are giving you um, all the surroundings, the, giving you an understanding of how to plan, how to deploy Office 365, that's today and tomorrow. But don't uh, mistake this as being focused only on the exam 7321. Um, this will be also very important to understand um, uh, how to plan and deploy to uh, ultimately administer Office 365 for exam 7323 for yesterday. So don't take this out of context. Everything you hear today or tomorrow is still somewhat pertinent to pass exam 7321. So this will be very intense packed days. Don't be daunted. We have the best possible speakers here to help you through this and be perfectly prepared. But make sure you have a good understanding of the following technologies. Assume knowledge here is you know those server client technologies. Um, be somewhat familiar with PowerShell. Know networking technologies that are listed here. Uh, this is not a basic class. There's some assumed knowledge that you have um, familiarity with those technologies. So go through the slide. Make sure you have heard about all this and uh, go a little bit deeper before you might start uh, taking this training. With that. Um, to put this in context, we started with infrastructure planning. The first four sessions today uh, will be about planning and deploying and setting up ADFS, Active Directory Federation Services, single sign-on, SSO, as well as Director Synchronization, DIRSync. Those will be like one big block together. Um, so see this all in context and full view will walk us through all those. That will be followed with Exchange Online Unified Messaging um, and de planning and deploying link. So one last thing before we start, and I just mentioned that before, that don't take day two and three out of context of day one and vice versa. Um, yesterday we mentioned that uh, when we talked through Director Sync and Act Active Directory uh, Federation Services, that session is uh, one block together with deploying single sign-on. You see session module two and three as well as planning and deploying their sync. With that, I would like to hand it over to Fulvio, walk us through the agenda and today's content. Thank you so much, Stefan. Great. So, what we will do today, we will talk about uh, how to prepare our uh, on-premise infrastructure to work with uh, Office 365. So we will talk about, for example, DNS preparation, domain preparation, active directory preparation, so all the tasks that are required to build an advanced environment that will include uh, Active Directory, Federation Services, as we said, hybrid coexistence also, 
um, with uh, Exchange Online. Then we will uh, talk about uh, uh, the deployment readiness tool that is a free tool available from Microsoft that can help a lot in understanding uh, uh, more about your local Active Directory. So you can understand uh, um, what you have inside uh, your Active Directory, what a customer has inside this Active Directory, because many times uh, we have customers that uh, don't know really well what kind of uh, possible blockers there are inside their infrastructure. We are speaking about uh, possible user account with problem, uh, features that are not currently supported by Office 365 uh, and so on. Then we will uh, speak for just a few, uh, few minutes about the Office 365 deployment guide to um, underline some resources that uh, can help a lot uh, in uh, understanding other requirements, in particular related to network connectivity for the on-premise environment and Office 365. So let's, st let's start with the first, uh, uh, let me say, block, the, the first topic that is DNS preparation. Okay. Uh, in one of the first modules of yesterday, if I remember exactly, it should be the second one, we had a conversation about how to add a domain to our Office 365 subscription. Do you remember, Stefan, uh, on the portal, you need right. to, okay, you need to walk through the um, many tabs to add your own domain to Office 365, and then you need to uh, perform some uh, changes or, or updates uh, on the uh, registered DNS uh, portal to enable your domain to work uh, with uh, Office 365. Right. Uh, remember that uh, this is uh, an important uh, step uh, that should be performed also before starting to deploy uh, Office 365 because we are just adding the domain to Office 365, not using it. So uh, we, we can perform this operation whenever we want. We don't need to do that uh, uh, only because we want to enable mail routing, for example, or because we want to start working tomorrow with Office 365. We can just start adding our domain, we are ready. Then when we will decide, we can uh, start using our domain with Office 365. Nothing right. will change in our infrastructure when we add a domain to Office 365 at the moment. So there was yesterday when you, you're in Office 365, you get your on Microsoft.com domain that yep. you can choose yep. if it's available. And that's a, a, like a kind of a test domain, right? Yeah. Um, not a real domain that everybody has, but like a cloud identity. We talked about Perfect. that. And then you can attach this to, and we, I think we talked about but Microsoft.com or any Perfect. domain that you actually own, you go to GoDaddy. How many domains uh, as you want. Right, that's where you attach this. Yeah, it's, uh, it's perfect. What I want just to add uh, uh, today to what we said already yesterday is uh, uh, that uh, when you add the CNAME record verification for GoDaddy, for example, or for other re register, could be that uh, in some cases uh, the uh, verification and DNS propagation will take something like uh, uh, more than 24 hours, uh, in some cases 72 mm -hmm. hours to be, um, let me say... Um, when it becomes available, really? Yeah, right? or, or worldwide. So mm -hmm. um, be, please be patient and plan this particular operation with uh, some hours or better days before you, you are thinking to uh, really start to work uh, on an Office 365 environment. So be ready before, so when you will work uh, on it, uh, you can uh, do whatever you want because the environment is already done. Okay? Yeah. So just uh, to have a really, really quick look about uh, how to add a domain to Office 365, on the uh, Office 365 uh, admin portal, you need to log on to the uh, usual portal with the administrative credential, click on management, domain, and then add uh, a domain to your Office 365 subscription. This is easy. And then uh, if you uh, complete the uh, verification with the register, you will have uh, something like uh, uh, on the slide, the last uh, block uh, in the slide in front of you. So you will have your domain, in this case it's fargo.gpsdemo.net, and this stat status is verified, so we can use this domain whenever we want. Okay? Mm -hmm. What we need to do to uh, enable this domain uh, uh, for Office 365 is to um, proceed with the verification uh, through the portal. Uh, we will have uh, uh, from the system a random uh, value here, MS, and a random value here. We need to create a text, uh, txt record or a mx record on our register to enable domain verification. 
we will have uh, something like this. For example, in front of you there is the GoDaddy panel. We have uh, the um, we have created here a TXT uh, record with the value that uh, the Office 365 uh, portal provided us. So in uh, something like a uh, few minutes or few hours, a uh, few hours uh, as we said, we will be able to validate and uh, use our domain. So the domain will be in a verified status and we, we can uh, use it for our users and uh, our mail system for Office 365. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes, can I inject one question that yeah. actually came up yesterday? It might be very basic, but um, mm -hmm. was asked, what is the difference between MX record and TXT record? Perfect. Okay, this is a, a good question. MX record is us usually used to, uh, for mail system to understand uh, what is the right uh, uh, server where to re redirect uh, a particular message. So if I send an email through the internet, uh, the mail system, my mail server, will try to understand what is the destination of my message, mm -hmm. uh, looking at the MX record that, that is uh, stored inside the register mm -hmm. uh, setting. TXT value usually instead is used to add uh, information to your uh, specific domain. So as you can see in the screen uh, in, front, um, in front of us, there are many TXT records that can be used to um, expand uh, the information related uh, to a specific domain. In this case, the first one is about uh, domain verification. We can remove it uh, just after uh, have completed the uh, verification with Office 365. The second one, uh, we will talk about it uh, in a few seconds, in a few minutes. And the, uh, the third and the fourth are related instead uh, to hybrid coexistence with Exchange. We will talk about that uh, in uh, tomorrow in the, in, the, in the morning with uh, Ajinkia when we will talk about uh, hybrid coexistence mm -hmm. with uh, Exchange. So, TXT, right. uh, additional information or verification record for our domain, MX is related to mail routing. Messaging, right. yeah. Messaging exchange, MX. Messaging. Right. Uh, it's yeah. not related uh, directly to exchange, but all mail system. Okay? This is really, really important. Okay, let's continue with that. Uh, we need to create also a sender policy framework record. Wow, this is a pretty, pretty new uh, record between uh, DNS management uh, and uh, so on. SPF record can help a uh, mail uh, messaging system to um, give the right uh, uh, value to your messages. So they are not recognized as uh, spam, for example, or so on. So SPF record will uh, certify that uh, um, a specific mail system is the right uh, and the correct uh, owner of uh, a specific domain. So, for example, Exchange Online is the mail system related to the um, domain uh, gpsdemo.net, for example. Uh, so it uh, helps a lot uh, when we are speaking about uh, a possible problem related to uh, anti-spam or credibility of uh, um, a specific message. Okay, as you can see, we are again on uh, the um, GoDaddy portal here, and uh, we added another TXT record here that is, uh, an, as we said, an SPF value that will say that uh, um, our um, uh, our mail system will be related to Microsoft, so it's uh, Outlook.com in this case. It's also important to underline that uh, all these records, TXT, MX, and so on, should have uh, one TTL, TTL of one hour at least, if possible. Time to leave is the, the, right, uh, uh, the right name. Let's continue. We should also uh, start to thinking about and plan the auto-discover service. Do you know what is the auto-discover service in general, uh, Stefan? Do you have an idea? Do you, <coughs> you use no. it uh, more or less every day? You know that? I do. Yeah. Uh, auto-discover service is something that has been um, introduced uh, with uh, Exchange 2007. It helps uh, your Outlook 2007 or 2010 to auto-configure when you um, create the profile for the first time. So uh, um, think about when you uh, enter in a new company, for example. So you start working the first day. It's just an example. I, um, open my, I turn on my desktop. I fire. Outlook, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, it should uh, already uh, start with some uh, information on it, so username, password, uh, and so on. Uh, usually there is right. the, not the username, but the email address. 
when uh, Outlook starts. Using that email address, uh, if you have uh, correctly configured the uh, auto-discover service, Outlook can auto-configure itself to, um, to work with uh, Exchange 2007, 2010, but also with Exchange Online. So can save a lot of time to um, end user and administrator that uh, they don't need to perform any kind of operation because the system auto-configure the client. It's just one of the features provided by Autodiscover, but uh, it's really useful. It's quite useful. Oh, so it's basically when I set up a new mailbox, I type in an email address, yeah. it goes out and uh, figures out what's the right server, SMTP server, inbound, outbound, and configures all of that yeah, for me. Perfect. I don't have to do this. Perfect. Right? That's the Autodiscover it, it, it's, uh, it's uh, exactly that uh, for just uh, to be a uh, more just clear again, system. more clear again. Mm -hmm. uh, when you um, log on to the um, when you use the Outlook client and you insert the, your email address, just for example, uh, this uh, Outlook will try to find uh, um, if exists a record that is called autodiscover.yourdomain.com and your domain is the one that is uh, uh, written in your email address because it will be something at domain. You will try to find right. autodiscover.domain and see if there are any if there are information about